interturocantric fractures. What we need to know? Key points. The treatment of trochanteric hip fractures has undergone a favorable evolution and revolution during the past 20 years. With new technical concepts such as cheap apex distance, proximal lateral wall, cortical support reduction, and the instrumental success of intramedullary nailing. Anteromedial cortex to cortex support reduction is a key element for stability reconstruction because it allows limited sliding to provide positive biomechanical environment for the fracture contacts and healing. 10 tips in new recognition and clinical practice were summarized to improve overall bone implant stability and reduce post-operative complications. Introduction Hip fractures can be treated with internal fixation, extramedullary side plates or intramedullary needs, or prosthetic arthroplasty. Current, more and more surgeons prefer to use cephalomedullary device for the fixation of unstable perturocanteric fractures. Fractures occur cervicotrochanteric junction extending from the extracapsular basilar neck region to the lesser trochanter and this region have uh, important features this metaphysial diaphysial region creates a variety of fractures with damage to the intersecting cancellous compression and tensile lamellar networks and the weak cortical bone Fracture line mapping. More unstable pertrunk and fray fractures. 31A2 are most frequent pattern of fractures and account for 60 to 70 percentage of trochanteric hip fractures. In this study, uh, consequently, too much fracture uh, fractures. Uh, evaluated in three-dimensional CT and look at the established fracture lines anterior, medial, posterior, lateral and top of the proximal femur you can understand, realize how the fracture pattern fracture mapping in unstable A2 pattern gives a clear recognition that only the anterior medial fracture line is simple and only these cortices can be used for fracture reduction to get a stable support for the head neck fragment. The interthoracanteric femur region is one of the four distinct regions of the proximal femur. Femoral head, neck interthoracanteric and subthoracanteric regions. The greater trochanter is an apophyse, an insertion point for several important muscles. The piriformis muscle inserts on, the, on its tip, and the gluteus medius and minimus fan around the dorsal, dorsal lateral and ventrolateral side, while the intertrochanteric fossa is the insertion point of the short external rotators, musculus gemelli obturatorius internus and obturatorius externus. The lesser trochanter is insertion point for the iliopsoas muscle and an important cortical st stabilizer, calcar. In the intertrochanteric fractures requiring intermediate nail fixation, four main fragments are commonly found head neck, greater trochanter, Laser trochanter and shaft corresponding to AO structure types A2 and A3. As a mechanical axis runs medial to the lesser trochanter, the fracture typically displays in a worse direction. How to reduce the fracture? You should make traction 
abduction internal rotation Economic considerations warrant the use of extra medullary fixation devices in stable fracture AO type A1 situations. For potential unstable fracture situations, AO type A2 and A3, in which the medial support of the calcar is missing, intramedullary fixation devices have, been, have an, an advantage over sliding hip screw systems. The developmental principle behind the intramedullary system was in part to shorten the lever arm of force affecting the medial calcar region. Look at the figure. Biomechanical studies have shown, th shown that the load to failure resistance is almost doubled for intramedullary systems compared to the extramedullary ones. Mostly in our uh, times trochanteric entry point is uh, usually uh, preferable for the surgeons also devices are very available for trochanteric entry point piriformis fossa have often merits and demerits for example the piriformis fossa was introduced as an entry point that in the line with the longitudinal axis of the femur to reduce the risk of varus malalignment at a time when rigid straight nails were used. Studies showed a high union and low infection rate. A disadvantage of entry point is lower tolerance for incorrect portal placements. If the entry point deviates anterior to the piriformis fossa by a little as 6 mm, the resulting circumferential stresses can cause anterior cortical blowout. Establishing the entry point can be challenging in obese patients to a higher medial, medialization needed. Compared to the trochanteric point, especially in minimal invasive exposures, cadaveric studies have shown that the piriformis, piriformis entry point can damage the anterior branches of the medial circumflex artery, compromising the femoral head's blood supply. Trochanteric entry point was introduced by Kuncher already in 1939. Almost all current nails designs accommodate for the trochanteric entry site by having a lateral proximal band between 4 to 6 degrees to prevent varus malalignment. The entry point is easier to establish, more forgiving a cause of less soft tissue damage to the abductor complex and short external rotators. Future studies have shown decreased operating and fluoroscopy time. What is the tip apex distance? Tip apex distance described by uh, scientists uh, is an important indicator for uh, cutout to reduce the risk of screw migration or cutout the distance between the tip of the femoral neck screw and the border of the femoral neck is a useful measure this distance is measured in both ap and lateral weave and summated the resulting tip apex distance is a predictive of a risk screw cutout studies have shown that Tip apex distance should be below 20 to 25 mm, have significantly less migration and cutout complications. Proximal lateral wall and anterior cortex. Trochanteric lateral walls is primarily the lateral femoral cortex of the drilling site for head net fixation implant, as described by. Got fried in 2004. This area can provide a natural buttress for the head neck fragment fixation. A full description of the proximal femoral lateral wall includes height, width, thickness, area, biomechanical strength, strength and soft tissue attachment. The height of the lateral wall is still controversial. The authors define the lateral wall anatomically from vastus reach 
proximally to the inferior aspect of the lesser trochanteric distally. The criterion has been accepted as included in 2018 version AOOTA fracture dislocation classification compendium and, and is classified as type 2. The parameter is actually a mean distance between the fracture line and lateral cortex, which contains three parts. Lateral femoral cortex proper and the remaining anterior and posterior cortices. That is sum of remnant length of anterior and posterior cortical walls plus true lateral cortex thickness. As fracture line, pertrochanteric fractures A2 and A2, A1 runs obliquely along the greater to lesser trochanteric direction. The distance measured in the anterior cortex is always greater than the posterior cortex. The width of lateral wall is a horizontal distance between the anterior and posterior cortices. The width of femoral wall can be injured by coronal fracture lines, which usually start the trochanteric apex and exit either throughout the posterior crest and lesser trochanter or posterior medial cortex. cortex. When coronal fracture line exits inferior throughout the lesser trochanter or posterior medial cortex, the lateral femoral wall is always partially fractured and incompetent. Therefore, the author suggests that blank space 31A2 in 8, uh, uh, 2018 AOTI classification should be filled with multi fragmentary pertrochanteric per fracture with posterior coronal lateral wall rupture. The area of the lateral wall height times width may be more valuable parameter to estimate the risk of lateral wall rupture perioperatively. The soft tissue lateral wall is a tendinous aponeurotic structure formed by the attachment of medius and minimus muscles and the vastus lateralis origin get, that get mixed and intersected with each other over, over the osseous structures. Biomechanical strength of the lateral wall in osteoporotic elderly people is extremely weak. In some patients, the perioperative intact lateral wall may be broken during, the af during or after the surgery. From this point of view, some surgeons prefer cephalomedullary nail in all pertrochanteric hip fractures, regardless of stable A1 or stable A2. Disruption of lateral femoral wall converts the intertrochanteric fracture A1-2 into the reverse oblique fracture equivalent A3. Complete breakage of lateral wall is always accompanied by anterior cortex fracture simultaneously, which means there is no anterior or lateral cortex that can be relied on the support of head neck fragment. In essence, the role of mechanical buttress of the lateral wall is primarily played by the anterior or anterior medial cortex, which is the first line, line element to sustain the head neck. Lateral wall fracture can be subclassified further according to its specific features, such as the course of fracture line oblique transverse or reverse oblique and the presence of a free bone fragment at the junction of greater trochanter and lateral wall. Whether the lateral wall fragment needs additional management remains controversial. Owing the soft tissue lateral wall such as vastus lateralis muscle, a minimal displacement of lateral wall below 1 cm after nailing may not need additional reduction and fixation. Posterior medial lesser trochanter calcar fragment. The presence of a posterior medial intermedial fragment, the third lesser trochanter, is the key characteristic that the different TAs, simple A1 and a combinated A2 per fracture patterns. 
Previous biomechanical studies have shown that the lesser trochanter fragment plays a key role in the reconstruction of a fracture stability, and the larger size of the defect that detached lesser trochanter fragments create the more unstable fracture. 87% of lesser trochanter fragment contained a femoral calcar, which was an intermediary vertical cortex strut in the posterior medial region. The posterior medial lesser trochanter calcar fragment. Some investigators have advocated reduction and fixation of the lesser trochanter fragments, such as minimal invasive circulage wiring. The technique, however, was tedious and time consuming. Also, technique was just to get fragment closer to the shaft, with no rigid fixation achieved, which was less helpful for early biomechanical biomechan stability. Currently, there is no reliable and convenient method in practice to reduce this to fix posterior medial lesser trochanter fragment. This means that only the anterior medial cortex is left and can be relied on for satisfactory cortex support reduction. Anterior medial cortical support reduction. Fracture reduction is the first step in the treatment and is always a gr of a greater importance than the other factors. For trochanteric fractures, the reduction quality assessed by fluoroscopy, intraoperatively, and by the radio or radiography, CT scanning, and the 3D reconstruction postoperatively. Fracture reduction quality is evaluated by garden alignment and fragment displacement. The most accepted criteria proposed by Baumgartner and colleagues categorize the reduction quality as a good, acceptable, or poor. Anteromedial cortical support reduction. For a reduction to be considered good, there has to be normal or slight valgus alignment on the AP weave less than 20 degrees of angulation on the lateral weave and no more than 4 mm of displacement of any fragment. To be considered acceptable, a reduction has no meet criterion of a good reduction with respect to either alignment or displacement, but not both. Poor reduction meets neither criterion. Acceptable quality for good reduction of main fragment displacement is less than one cortex thickness, thickness or 4 to 5 mm, regardless of its location and direction. As a mechanical principle after fracture reduction, the heat neck fragment is permitted to telescope along the axis of the implant, laxi creep or helical plate, and then a secondary stability is achieved by a medial and or anterior cortex to cortex contact between the femoral neck and shaft. If no cortical support is obtained at this moment, head neck fragment slides further until it gets buttressed from the intramedullary nail, which is situated in the central canal. If a side plate is used, however, the head neck fragment slides still further until it gets contact from the lateral wall, metal cortex or metallic plate. Otherwise, if the fracture is fixed by a dynamic hip screw and the lateral wall is ruptured preoperatively, no lateral structure is left to buttress the head neck fragment and is, it's usually impossible to achieve secondary stability. Construct collapse and mechanical failure such as femoral head cutout, shaft medialization and leg shortening and implant breakage probably will occur because the head neck fragment has a an impact obliquely to the lateral inferior direction, its position after reduction and fixation must be considered to predict the probability to achieve cortical contact and mechanical buttress from the, from the mid femoral shaft. A full description of a medial cortical support reduction or cortex to cortex contact involves assessment in bo both AP weave for medial cortex and the lateral wave for the anterior cortex, with an emphasis on the anterior medial inferior corner oblique wave. To obtain the oblique wave, first authors align the nail and blade in a straight line, fluoroscopically, and observe the true lateral wave, zero degrees. 
then fluoroscope is gradually lowered by lowered every 10 degrees observing the clear view of anterior medial aspect continuing anterior medial cortical support reduction usually at approximately 30 degree rotation of a fluoroscope a proper tang tangential view of the anterior medial portion can be seen the relationship between the head neck fragment and femoral shaft which describes the position of their cortical layers or the trend in their changes of position after the sliding along the implant axis usually 130 degrees is evaluated and classified into three categories positive neutral and negative for both medial and anter anterior cortical opposition look at the figure this figure really explanatory and demonstrative in AP view the relationship or the trend between the two medial cort cortices of the head neck shaft fragments was evaluated after oblique lateral sliding if the medial cortex of the head neck fragment was located slightly one cortical thickness I mean super superomedial to the upper medial edge of the shaft it was classed in a positive position for a medial cortical support if the medial cortex and the head, neck, head and neck fragment was contacted smoothly to the medial cortex of the femoral shaft it was classified as a neutral position if the medial cortex of the head neck fragment was displaced laterally to the upper medial edge of the femoral shaft it was classified as a negative opposition which means that there was a mal reduction and the medial cortical buttons from the femoral shaft had been lost in the lateral view the relationship or trend between the two anterior cortices of the head neck and femoral shaft was assessed after parallel sliding if the anterior cortices made a smooth contact or if the step off regardless of a neck cortex shifted anterior or posteriorly was less than a half of the cortical thickness or two millimeters it was classified as a neutral position for anterior cortical support if the head neck cortex was anterior displaced more than a half of the cortical thickness it was classified as a positive and if it was posterior displaced i mean posterior sac by more than a half of the cortical thickness it was classified as negative neutral positions in both ap and lateral views on fluoroscopy are acceptable but they do not indicate anatomic reduction accurate differentiation of cortical reduction quality depends on the surgeon's experience and pixel resolution and clarity of the image intensifier the so-called anatomic reduction shown on the intraoperative fluoroscope may actually include three subconditions an exact anatomic cortex to cortex position a slightly positive position and a slightly negative position because intraoperative fluoroscopic image in resolution is limited however two millimeter cortical steps may not in identifiable and identifiable therefore the, those three sub conditions generally are not able to be clearly distinguished the term neutral instead of anatomic therefore is used to delineate this smooth contact in the fluoroscopy after sliding and a fragment impaction a slight positive position might become a truly negative pattern in a post-operative period cortex to cortex support reduction is a non-anatomic functional buttress pattern a positive cortical support reduction pattern is easy to obtain in practice for unstable fractures and is used to achieve secondary stability whereas exact anatomic reduction is difficult to obtain by closed maneuver and is used to achieve primary fracture stability in a medial positive cortical support pattern an end-to-end -end side cortical contact between two main fragments is achieved meanwhile the medial cortex of the femoral shaft can prevent future lateral sliding of the femoral head neck fragment this table is 
very explanatory. This table uh, clearly describes fluoroscopy view. What is the meaning of positive cortical support, lateral cortical, cortical support, and negative cortical support? Also described in the lateral view, reduction quality by fluoroscopy, clinical achieve achievability, and 3D CT full range view also uh, explain the uh, positive cortical support, neutral cortical support, and negative cortical support. Please carefully examine this table. Anterior cortical contact after head neck sliding also can provide a rigid buttress for secondary stability. Considering the nature of the lateral sliding direction of the head neck fragment, however, biomechanical study demonstrate that the medial cortical support was more important than the anterior cortical support. In addition, obtaining both medial and anterior cortical support, I mean anterior medial reduction, is best option for fracture reduction. Then the hip loading is distributed between the contact of the cortices and the pressures of bone to implant. This figure very uh, demonstrative. Look at the uh, positive uh, cortical support. Look at the figure A. Also in lateral radiography, look at the figure B. You can see the positive cortical support. And uh, anterior medial inferior corner is clearly shown in this figure. And also examine the CT uh, scan uh, images of the cort medial cortical positive support and cortex buttress. Clinical case series demonstrated that patients in positive cortical support reduction group had at least had the least loss of neck shaft angle and neck length and got ground walking much ear earlier than the negative cord reduction group with good functional outcomes and less hip tie pain presence. Chunks group also proposed a new fracture reduction criterion for unstable patrocantin fractures. L examine the table too. Good quality of fracture reduction includes slight valgus position in alignment and a positive medial cortical opposition in displacement AP wave, and central axial alignment with smooth anterior cortex contact in sagittal wave. Quality of fracture reduction in unstable paratrochanteric hip fractures. Examine the table. Garden alignment, AP weave, normal or slight valgus, score 1. Lateral weave angulation less than 20 degrees, score 1. Fragment displacement of head neck. AP weave, positive or neutral, medial cortical, cortical opposition, 1. Lateral weave, smooth continuity of anterior cortex. Score 1. Quality of fracture reduction. Good. Total score 4. Acceptable. Total score 3. Poor. Less than 2. It was noted that if a, a positive AP a cortical opposition was combined with a positive neutral, a positive neutral lateral cortical opposition seen on intraoperative fluoroscopy, it was highly predictive of a reliable value with definitive cortical support as demonstrated by post-operative 3D dimensional CT studies. Uh, 88 percentage cases have good results. On the other hand, if a negative lateral opposition was seen in intraoperative fluoroscopy, 7 cases, regardless of RP wave, it was generally predictive of, of, of a final loss of cortical support and demonstrated by uh, 3D uh, CT scan, uh, 6 cases, 85% uh, uh, failure. This study concluded that the combinations of a po both positive, positive and both positive to let neutral patterns in AP and lateral fluoroscopy are reliable for predicting final and definitive cortical support. But any negative opposition, especially anterior cortex on lateral weave, this means posterior sac, is highly predictive of 
post-operative loss of antinomedial cortical contact. Besides the position between the head neck fragment to the femoral shaft, several other factors can interfere the sliding movement and change the final cortical opposition of the anterior medial inferior corner. These may include the ability to initiate head neck sliding, the direction of sliding, the rotation and or tilting during, during sliding, and residual space between head neck fragment and femoral shaft and the external rotation of the femoral shaft, which opens the gap and step between the two anterior cortices. This unfavorable phenomenon involves more than early patients and with severe osteoporosis because they have markedly low degrees of implant bone purchase. Neither IAP or nor lateral negative opposition which needs further corrections during, uh, during the operation should be accepted. Instrument reduction techniques such as passing a bone hook through a nail, insertion, incision, proximal to the greater trochanter or periosteal elevator through the helical blade or cephalomedullary screw incision distal to the greater trochanter is very effective for digging out the posteriorly engaged head neck fragment by a rotational leverage technique. The technique of the uh, sephoromedullary nail is, is described in this section. In general, extramedullary and intramedullary fixation devices are available for the treatment of unstable fractures of proximal femur. Currently, there is insufficient evidence to say which is best. Fixation with cephalomedullary device allows immediate full weight bearing postoperatively. However, it is more difficult than the extramedullary fixation and more intraoperative problems may arise. Immediate weight bearing is, is a must for elderly. This justifies the preference for intramedullary devices. The proximal femoral nail anterotation PFNA device is a short intramedullary nail which uses a separate blade device to obtain fixation in the femoral head rather than a conventional screw. The operative technique for other cephalomedullary devices is similar, but for details see the manufacturer's guides. Preliminary remarks. A simple patrocontact fracture without a distal extension or Without another fracture distally, can be treated successfully with short intramedullary nail. Preoperatively check the degree of anterior bow of the femur on the X-ray of the uninjured extremity. If the tip of the nail comes to lie at the apex of the anterior bow, use a long nail or choose a plate. We shall demonstrate now the steps of the insertion of the short proximal femoral intramedullary nail PFNA. Preoperative planning. Depending on the CT, uh, on uh, implant use, the most appropriate CCD angle has to be determined preoperatively. Take an AP X-ray of the uninjured leg using the preoperative planning plate. Measure this CCD angle uh, of the uninjured leg. CCD means center column diaphysis angle. In most cases, the, an implant with CCD angle of a 130 degree angle will be appropriate. Determine the nail diameter. Determine the intermedullary diameter by placing the radiographic ruler over the AP X-rays of the fractured femur. This will determine which nail to use. It has to correspond to intramedullary diameter of the femur. Reduction aids. Helpful instruments for reducing proximal femoral fractures include shunt screw, and T-handle, ball tippet posher, and larger pointed reduction forceps. All can be used percutaneously. Positioning and Reduction Positioning The patient is positioned spin on the fracture table. The ipsilateral arm is elevated in a sling while the uninjured leg is placed on the leg holder. 
It is important to ensure that the ipsilateral hip is an an ADD adducted position. To accomplish this, push the torso 10 to 15 degrees a control lateral side. Close reduction. To reduce the fracture, the first apply traction in the direction of the length of the extremity. This will distract the fragments and restore the length. The second step is internal rotation. Check each step with the image intensifier. Caution. Excessive traction in an attempt to reduce the fracture can lead to pelvic rotation rotation around the perineal post of the fracture table. When the pelvis rotates as illustrated, it produces relative abduction of the hip, thus interfering with access to the proximal femoral nail entry site. Scissor positioning. Placing, in, placing both legs in traction prevents pelvic rotation. The injured hip is slightly flexed and the adducted to allow nail entrance. The hip on the uninjured side is extended and abducted to allow lateral imaging. Two legs are positioned like open scissors. The C arm is placed beside the, the uninjured hip. It's helpful to use slightly oblique lateral waves to avoid superimposition of the instrumentation or of the patient's opposite leg. Determination of the entry point. The short nails are slightly curved anterior to correspond to the anterior bow of the femur and have a slight lateral deviation of the proximal part in the APV, AP plane to correspond to the shape of the greater trochanter. The entry point is usually on the lateral aspect of the greater trochanter. See the kneeling approach. Make your skin incision in line with the femoral shaft axis and about 5 cm proximal to the tip of the trochanter. Guide wire insertion. Take the guide wire for the short nail and insert it just lateral to the tip of the greater trochanter and the line with the middle of the femoral neck and slightly lateral to the line corresponding to the anatomical axis of the shaft. Note, as the lateral deviation of the different implants vary, the exact entry point changes accordingly. Check the guide wire position. Insert the guide wire into the femoral shaft and check its position using the image intensifier. Ideally, the guide wire's position in the femoral shaft should be central and deviate slightly proximally according to the degree of the lateral band of the implant in AP plane. In axial view, it must be in line with the middle of the femoral neck. Opening of the femur. Insert the protection sleeve with its trocar over the guide wire and push it through the soft tissues until it abuts the, against the greater trochanter. Then withdraw the trochanter, trocar, and insert an appropriate drill bit over the guide wire. Ream out the trochanteric area, ream by hand in the elderly to avoid damage to fragile trochanteric shell. In young patients, use power. Remove the guide wire after reaming. Not only exceptional cases where the medullary canal is smaller than the chosen nail, it will be necessary to overream the femoral shaft so that its its diameter is one millimeter greater than that of the chosen nail. Third, maintaining reduction during reaming. If the fracture passes through the end nail entry side, and Medially directed force applied to the lateral trochanteric region helps to prevent drills or reamers from displacing the greater trochanteric segments. Laterally, this allows reaming of a channel of for the nail so it's so that its insertion does not distract the fracture. Achieve a ne neck shaft axis 130 degrees. 
Avoiding virus deformity is important to improve fixation and to preserve functionally important anatomy. Begin by choosing a nail with neck shaft angle at least 130 degrees. Tips to correct virus. Advanced nail, increase traction, remove guide wire from femoral head and abduct extremity. This will require modifying its entrance channel. Nail insertion. In most patients, the nail mounted on the insertion device can be inserted manually. Use the image intensifier as a help and insert the nail to such a depth that will allow the blade to be placed through the middle of the femoral neck. There are many devices now available with various proximal locking options. Refer to the manufacturer's guide for the technical details. Positioning of the guide wire. Mount the aiming arm for blade onto the insertion device. Make a small incision at the appropriate place. Insert the drill sleeve assembly through the aiming device and advance it through the soft tissue tissues to the lateral cortex. The ideal position of guide wire in the AP plane is lying with the axis of the neck and slightly in the lower half. In the lateral view, it must be in line with the axis of the neck. The guide wire is inserted subchondrally into the femoral head. It should end 5 mm proximal to the joint. Measuring the length of the blade. Because of the tip of the guide wire was inserted into the subchondral bone, take a blade which is 10 to 15 millimeter shorter than the measurement. This will ensure that the tip of the blade will be on 10 millimeter from the joint. If you are using the PFNA, insert the 11 drill bit over the guide wire and open the lateral cortex to 11 mm. In a young patient, drill the neck with 11 mm reamer to make room for the helical blade. In elderly, stop once you have opened the lateral cortex. The neck has so little bone that it is best to insert the helical blade by hand over the guide wire without reaming the bone. This prevents unnecessary destruction of the reaming bone stock. Insert the blade over the guide wire to the stop. Check under image intensification that the blade protrudes, protrudes slightly over the lateral cortex. The blade has to be locked and locking has to be verified intraoperatively. The blade is locked if all gaps are closed. If it cannot be locked, it has to be replaced. Distal locking. Drilling hole for distal locking. Make a stop incision. Insert the drill bit using a protection sleeve through the selected locking hole. Drill both cortices. Insertion of a locking bolt. For simple and multifragmentary patrocantric fractures, static locking is uh, sufficient. This should be inserted according to the producer's instructions. Insertion of the end cap. Use a, an end cap might be considered according to the producer's instructions. However, as nearly none of the implants will be removed, this step is generally not necessary. The final position of the nail is checked with two planes. Thanks for watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit canal.